So again, uh, here at the Auto Show, I'm with Kevin Dwyer from Polaris. Um, you know, in another capacity, I've, I've had a chance to drive, you know, the, the EV Ranger. It's very interesting, you know, in comparison to the, the ICE version, as far as some of the differences and how it delivers power, the smoothness, things of that nature. But, um, you know, can you just kind of tell me a little bit about, you know, where, like this vehicle, kind of where Polaris is going with it and some of the other projects that you guys are working on? Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of background on the Kinetic. It was developed in close partnership with uh, Zero Motorcycles. Okay. Who has an extensive background in uh, electric powertrain yeah. systems, software, and that type of technology. So uh, together with Polaris and our extensive uh, history in off-road products and product development, we were able to marry those two together and really quickly come to market with uh, a groundbreaking industry leading product, which is the Ranger XP okay. Kinetic. Um, so yeah, these come in two different trim levels. Uh, the lower spec is called premium and that comes with uh, about 15 kilowatt hours of okay. battery capacity and up to six kilowatts of onboard charging, charging capacity with accessory upgrades. Oh, okay. The higher spec version is the Ultimate, uh, which is this right here. So it has a few additional features, uh, including double the battery capacity. So it's almost 30 kilowatt hours. You can upgrade the onboard charging again to uh, as much as nine kilowatts of onboard capacity. Um, charging is all industry standard. So it uses a level two J1772 connector, which is common to nearly all on-road vehicles sure. these days. Um, there's some additional features and functionality that differentiate it from the gas version. Uh, mainly touch points that customers will appreciate and, and recognize. This now has a selectable forward and reverse switch on the gear stick. So okay. it still has high, low, neutral and park. Uh, as the gear selector, but switching between forward and reverse is just a, a push button, which is you know a huge advantage if you're talking about snow plowing or backing sure. up to a trailer, those types of uh, situations. So now this is very similar to the like the ICE version. Is the do the gearboxes have similar or carryover with the the ICE vehicle as well? Uh, no. So the gearbox is different. It does use a, a different drive system. There's no CVT okay. uh, or clutch like we had in the, the previous vehicle. There is still a belt drive, but it's a, a different tooth belt that's uh, designed to last the life of the vehicle and be, okay. you know, non-serviceable. But um, other than that, it, there is a fair amount of commonality in the drivetrain, to, to my gotcha. understanding. Now, like you kind of mentioned with some of like the, the charging capabilities, you know, with it, obviously, you know, very, very recently, you know, there's a lot of OEMs on the, the auto side that are going to the NACS Tesla port. Is that something you guys think you might be getting on board with or? Well, we're certainly keeping an eye on where the industry is going yeah. and uh, we want to be on par where and when it makes sense sure. uh, for our customers. And, uh, you know, I, I can't speak to that specifically, no, no, no. but um, I can say that, you know, we are aware of what the industry trends are and where things are moving and uh, we want to be on par when it makes sense for, okay. for us to be so or to do so. Now, there is like, uh, you know, obviously access to the battery, but uh, is there any capability to do like vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to grid? Uh, no, not at this stage. So uh, charging is all one way um, from the, the EVSE to the gotcha. vehicle. Yeah. Do you feel like maybe in the future that'd be something that players would look into? Or? Uh, it's difficult for me to speculate, but sure. it's really exciting to think about that sort of thing. Right. Um, and, you know, there's plenty of opportunities for exportable power yeah. and power as an accessory in the future, right. where we can benefit customers uh, through accessorization and, and okay. exportable power and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've lost power a few times and uh, we just plugged the lightning in. We can't run the entire building off it, but we, we, we can run quite a bit of stuff off our lightning that we have at work. So. Yeah, and for, um, for these types of customers who are out on the job site or on their ranch or on their farm uh, or at a, a campsite or something like that, to in the future, be able to export more power. Uh, you know, we can see there's a lot of value for a customer in, in that kind of situation. Currently, they do have a 12 volt SAE um, port in the back, okay. which you can run ex power accessories off of as well. Um, so that that is current capability, current exam uh, standard, which is just over there on the other side of the bed, which is kind of obscured from view right now. With the bed extender? Yeah. Gotcha. But, you know, we're, we're really excited to be here with uh, the MEDC and in particular the Michigan uh, Office of uh, Recreation yeah. and uh, Outdoor Industry. So we're, you know, very proud to be partnering with the MEDC. They funded Polaris uh, with $700,000 of grant money to okay. develop the first of its kind outdoor uh, EV charging network 
in Ontonagon County in the Western UP. And uh, with that funding, we've uh, worked with a company out of Austin, Texas called Yada Energy, who's okay. supplying uh, microgrid charging stations, which are solar powered and have onboard battery storage. Right. Um, and a local Polaris Adventures outfitter who will receive a small fleet of Kinetics. Sure. Starting next year, uh, they'll be opening up rentals to the public and anyone can rent a Kinetic and take it out on a, uh, you know, designed route for for an EV experience in the... That's pretty, I mean, I'm not a native Michigander, but like one of the coolest things about Michigan when I moved here was like the entire ORV network of trails. For people that don't know, uh, you know, if, if this is Michigan, you know, essentially here upwards, you can drive through various portions of the states almost like exclusively off road. There's all these trails that run everywhere. And um, that's kind of interesting that from like even just a microgrid perspective and um, and the approach to it, that there's going to be more remote potential for charging, you know, in the future, especially with some of these vehicles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's still very early stages for us. So it's all about investigating. It's all about learning. We want to, you know, understand what it will take in the future to make uh, recreational trail riding sure. experience uh, excellent for our customers. The, this vehicle itself is more utility and work oriented, right. but we do know that um, on uh, Saturday and Sunday, our customers like to take these out and hit the trails too. Sure. And it really is a blast to drive. It's right. so much fun. It's so quick. Uh, you can throw it around on the trails and uh, it's just, you know, a, a hoot. So we're excited to set this fleet up, set this charging infrastructure up and share this experience with people in the UP and really understand what they think about it as right. well. Because, you know, we don't want uh, the charging experience to be a major detractor from sure. the overall riding experience. And, you know, if we can learn and understand um, how well we've executed that in this pilot, then you know, perhaps there may be opportunities to scale and replicate. Is there a rough timeline that you're kind of going through some of this implementation that these would be available for you know people? Yeah, absolutely. So we're currently looking to break ground this week uh, okay. on our, our first charging sites. Uh, there'll be four charging sites up in the UP. Uh, there is a, a uh, experience validation soft launch sure. that's planned for early October. And then uh, we'll use those vehicles as marketing and, and demo vehicles okay. over the winter months. And then come the spring, we'll be opening up the experience to public and uh, they can rent these vehicles through Hamilton's North Coast Adventures, which is a Adventures, our Polaris Adventures right. outfitter up in the UP. That's, I mean, all this is kind of like very interesting to me, just some like the remote aspect of it, um, especially since you're launching roughly prior to fall, you know, end of fall, going through winter, just the data collection opportunity to me seems fascinating. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Cause Obviously, cold weather EVs. There's there's an aspect about that, even with the battery storage perspective of maintaining the batteries at a comfortable temperature. It's uh, it's very interesting. So, um, like for people that don't do anything with the DNR in Michigan, you know, it's pretty. There's like a, a nice web page you can go through stuff. Whether you're hunting, fishing, you know, it's pretty interactive. So, is there like these are these uh, charging stations going to be like uploaded on the DNR map so you can kind of see some aspects of where these are going to be in the future? Or? Uh, so I'd say before the end of the fall, they'll be uh, in Polaris Ride Command. Okay. So anyone who's using Ride Command um, currently should be able to, you know, navigate the map to the UP and uh, find the charging stations. We're creating new icons to identify their location. And okay what have you. So any of our uh, Polaris Kinetic customers who have vehicles and are interested in you know, taking it out and doing some trail riding in the UP, the, the charging infrastructure uh, should be in place and charging is free to the public. So Polaris is offering this as, a, as an amenity sure. to the community. It's also accessible to road vehicles. So we're positioning them in small villages and townships adjacent to um, lakes and restaurants. Uh, one will also be going at an underground mine adventure tour uh, with 700 acres so you can explore their property but also take a mine tour and uh, yeah should, should be a lot of fun for folks out there on the trail. So one thing I'm just kind of curious about uh, obviously I've never re really used the kind of the, the players connect you know system but um, given that these are remote there's battery storage is there data being actively passed through the Polaris like infotainment um, about the state of the charger that uh, they might be uh, looking to use? Yeah, so we are going to be collecting um, both vehicle data and uh, consumer insights information through surveys and, and things like that. So we will have uh, a, some background information about the vehicle performance and yeah. state of charge and charge time and that kind of thing coming back to us. So 
we can really learn from it and make a, a better product and make more informed decisions about how we deploy charging infrastructure into trail systems in the future. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I mean, I really, I really appreciate you taking the time, you know, to talk to me about this. We've been trying to, Eric, I mean, for a while to like get one of these to actually look at and kind of go through. Um, Cause it's kind of a whole segment that in some ways is liberating because there's so many like federal requirements and different things on the automotive side where, you know, an off-road exclusive vehicle or something that's essentially just, um, I don't say really like resulted to, but essentially low speed or, or local townships or driving on uh, off highway use, you yeah. know, yeah. Yep. Uh, opens up like, I think a lot of potential to try and keep costs down um, and, and push the boundary on what some of these uh, EV ORVs, you know, are capable of doing, you know, kind of going forward. So it's, it's just something we've been interested in general, like very, just recently this week, we got a chance to look at one of the zero motorcycles, which is oh. very similar to kind yeah, of what's yeah, going yeah. on yeah. with this. Well, so. well, when the time comes next spring, we'd love to have uh, you and the Monroe team come up there and, okay. uh, and visit Ontonagon and check out the experience. In addition to renting side-by-sides, there's Lake Superior, there's the Porcupine Mountain State yep. Park, uh, just Lake Ogibbic, yeah, yeah it, it, um, the Ottawa National Forest. It's an amazing area that's really underrated, in my yeah. opinion. And, uh, you know, for, for corporate excursions, it could be the ideal uh, <laughs> opportunity for all these companies that are working in electrification these days. Interesting. Well, I'm glad we had a chance to, like, come across and see this. And it's, you know, I like off-roading real into it. And um, it's always something in the back of my mind, just wondering how this goes into the future, right? You know, with these vehicles, because it's obviously a challenge. So. Yeah, well, it's a, you know, exciting opportunity and we're really proud to be a part of shaping the future of power sports and electrification. Cool, well, Kevin, I appreciate it and thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks very Take much, care. Kevin.